Hello YouTube, welcome back. Uh, my name is Patrick Boyle. I'm a finance professor at King's College London and at Queen Mary University of London where I teach the Financial Derivatives Elective to Masters in Finance students. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today we're going to learn about Gamma. If you like this kind of content on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button too if you want to be notified every time I put a new video up. So this video is our seventh video in a series on the Greeks for options investors. All of the videos are arranged into a playlist which is linked to up there and you can check that out if you are interested. So today we're going to learn about Gamma. Gamma is the first second order Greek that we're going to look at. What it does is it measures the sensitivity of delta to changes in the price of the underlying. So if, if you've already watched the, the video on delta, delta is how much the price of an option changes for a 1% change in the underlying. And then gamma being a second order Greek, it's telling us how much one of our Greeks, how much delta changes for a 1% change in the price of the underlying. So it is the second derivative of the Black-Scholes options price taken with respect to the price of the underlying. It tells us how much delta should change for a 1% move in the price of the underlying. If gamma is small, delta changes slowly and delta neutral hedging is not required quite as often. If gamma is large, then delta is very sensitive to changes in the price of the underlying and frequent hedging is required. So while the underlying does have a delta and its delta is one, the underlying has no gamma. All long options have positive gamma and all short options have negative gamma. Gamma is greatest in near the money options. It diminishes the further in or out of the money that you go. I'll put a little uh, image up on the, the screen there for you to see. You can probably pause the video and see it a little bit better. Um, gamma varies with the time remaining to maturity as well. So for an at the money option, gamma increases as expiration approaches. For options that are deep in or out of the money, gamma will fall dramatically as expiration approaches. Gamma is important as it helps us to understand how our portfolio will behave for larger movements. Delta is not as informative for large movements, right? Because delta was how delta works for small changes in the price of the underlying, but obviously it's a linear approximation of a curved function, and so for larger moves, delta doesn't work that well. Delta neutrality provides protection against small movements in the price of the underlying, while gamma neutrality provides protection for larger movements between rebalancing. The closer your option is to being at the money, the higher the option's gamma will be. As an option moves further in the money or out of the money, the gamma will begin to decrease. Gamma is affected by the passage of time differently depending on the option's moneyness. If your option is at the money, gamma will increase significantly as you get closer to expiration. As you get further out of the money or deeper in the money, the effect on gamma is minimized. The further out in time your expiration, the smaller your gamma will be. Gamma and delta will not move around significantly if you have three, six or nine months left to expiration, even if your option moves in the money. There's still plenty of time for it to move back out of the money again. Um, so that's gamma. Hopefully you guys understand it. Uh, if you've reached it this far, please do hit the like button below. Um, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more and let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like me to make a video on. Um, these videos are all based on my book, which I have linked to below. Have a great day and talk to you later. Bye.